Hello, welcome to Revit Equipment Schedule Development Course. In this video series, you will learn how to create equipment schedules in Revit. You will also learn how to create and use an equipment schedule database to speed up your work. Each video of this course comes with Revit practice files that you can download for free. Link to download these files is below. So let's start with the first lesson. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 1c1, which you can download from the link below. Equipment schedules are tables that show parameter values of equipment in the Revit model. Each column in the equipment schedule represents a Revit parameter that is associated with equipment. The parameter can be either an instance parameter or a type parameter. For example, the first column in this schedule represents mark, which is an instance parameter. This means that the values that are listed in the mark column are unique for each equipment instance in the model. But the manufacturer in this column is a type parameter. The values in this column are equal for all instances of the same equipment type. Let's look at the model to learn more about the instance parameters and type parameters. These are the four equipment that were listed in the equipment schedule. Here I select the equipment HP03. Note that when I selected this equipment, the property palette on the right hand side changed. Now it is showing all the instance parameters and their values for the equipment that I just selected. We see that the value of the mark parameter is HP03 for this equipment. This value is also shown by the equipment tag. Now if I select another equipment, you will see that its mark value is different. And that's how instances are. Each instance of an equipment in the model can have unique values for its instance parameters. Now let's look at type properties of HP03. I do that by clicking on edit type button on the property palette. In this window, we see all the type parameters that are associated with this type of equipment. The values of these parameters are the same for all the instances. For example, we see that the manufacturer value for this type of equipment is RTU MFG1. So any other instance of this equipment type has RTU MFG1 as its manufacturer. To check that, I'm going to select HP01, which is the same type of equipment as HP03. And then I'm going to look at its type properties. Note that I just opened the edit type for the same type of equipment as I did when I selected HP03. So as we expect, the manufacturer value is RTU MFG1. Changing values of type properties will be applied to all instances. For example, here I change the manufacturer value to RTU MFG A53 and I hit OK. Now I check the type properties of HP03 which is the same equipment type as HP01. And we see that the manufacturer value is equal to what I just updated. Understanding the difference between instance parameter and type parameter is important when we work with parameters to create or edit the schedules. Now I'm back in the sheet that we looked earlier in this video. The remark section below the schedule is actually a legend and we will learn how to create legends like this in lesson 3. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 1d1, which you can download from the notes. Here, I'm going to create an equipment schedule for the 5 pieces of equipment that we have in this model. If you're curious to know, we have 1 heat pump, 1 fan, and 3 pumps. To create this schedule, I open the view tab from the ribbon and in the Create panel, I click on the Schedule button. A drop-down menu opens and I select the Schedule and Quantities. When I do that, a new window opens in which I need to make a few changes before creating the schedule. On the left-hand side, I need to select the category of the schedule. And of course, I select the mechanical equipment. Here on the right-hand side, I change the schedule name to Sample Schedule. I'm not too worried about the name here because I can change it later. I leave this option here on Schedule Building Components because mechanical equipment is a building component. For the phase of this schedule, I leave the drop down menu on New Construction. 
because all the instances of the equipment that we have in this model are assigned to new construction phase. I'm done here and I hit OK. And when I do that, the schedule properties window opens. This is a very important window because it gives us many options to change the schedule to what we really need. Note that this window has multiple tabs, but in this video, we only focus on the fields tab. Don't worry, we will go over all the other tabs in the next videos. So in the fields tab, I can select the columns of the equipment schedule from this available fields. And as we saw in the previous video, columns in the equipment schedule represent parameters in the Revit model. Remember that we selected the category of our schedule as mechanical equipment. So because of that, Revit has listed equipment parameters here and we can choose any of them as a column. As you can see, there are not many fields or parameters available by default, but we can create as many parameters as we like, and we will learn how to do that later. But for now, I pick only a few parameters from this list. I pick mark, manufacturer, model, and cost. I want the cost column to come after mark column. So I move up the cost parameter using this button over here. Before hitting OK and closing this window, I need to pay attention to this option over here. If I check this option, Revit will look at the mechanical equipment in any of the linked models and call them into the schedule that I am creating right now. But I don't have any other linked models in this project, so I leave this option unchecked. We need to check one more thing. Revit gives us a special option here to pick some parameters from room, space, and project information for this schedule. I said a special option because these parameters are not directly associated with the mechanical equipment. So let's try one of them. If I select project information, the list in the available fields changes to another set of parameters. And we can add any of these to our schedules. But for this schedule, I don't want to use any of these new parameters. So I change this option back to the mechanical equipment. I'm done in this window and I click OK to create the schedule. Here it is. We just created our first equipment schedule. As you see, the five pieces of equipment that we have in the model are all listed here. One of the biggest advantages of using a schedules in Revit is that we can directly change parameter values from the schedules. I can change the cell values as long as the parameter is not locked within the equipment family. However, I cannot make any changes to the parameters of the equipment in the linked models. Let's try to update a value. Here I change this pump's mark number to P01A sample. And I hit enter on my keyboard to update the value. Now this value is also updated in the Revit model. If I go to a floor plan view, we see that this equipment tag, which calls the value of the pumps mark, is updated here as well. Now I go back to the schedule by double clicking on the schedule name in the project browser. Schedules in Revit behave very similar to views when we want to add them to the sheets. Let's try it now. Here I open a sheet and I click on my schedule name in the project browser and then I drag and drop it to where I like. We can directly go to the schedule editing view by double clicking on the schedule and I just did that. Now it's your turn. For practice, create a new Revit file, add a few mechanical equipment to it and see if you can create a new equipment schedule just like the one we created in this video. Your other task is to link another Revit model that has mechanical equipment in it, and then list those equipment in your schedule. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 1E1, which is available for download in the notes. This is the schedule that I created in the last video. Here I like to change it so that it only shows the pumps. To do that, we have to use the filter feature, which is located here in the properties palette. I'm going to click on the filter button 
and then Revit opens the Schedule Properties window, but this time the Filter tab is active. Here in this tab, we can filter equipment by their sales value. One of the most common ways to filter equipment is to use mark value as the filtering condition. And that's what I'm going to use for this schedule as well. So here I define the filtering condition by choosing mark from this drop down menu. I select begins with from this one and then I type P in this box. This is because I want to include any equipment that its mark number starts with P. But if I wanted to filter another type of equipment, such as exhaust fan, I would type something else, like EF in this box. But for this example, I want to show only pumps, so I change this back to P and I hit OK. And great, our schedule only shows the pumps. One thing to be careful about is that if we change the mark number of an equipment to anything that doesn't meet the filtering condition, then that entire row goes away. For example, if I add a letter F to the mark value of the first pump, then the entire row goes away. To bring that row back, I'm going to a view where I can select the equipment. And then I delete the initial F from its mark number. So I go back to the schedule and we see that the deleted row has come back. Now for practice, Go ahead and add a few unit headers to the model, and then edit the schedule to only show those unit headers. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 1F1, which you can download from the link below. In this file, we have 5 pumps listed in a schedule as we see here. These pumps are not currently sorted based on their mark number, but I like to sort them that way. So. This is when we use sorting and grouping feature in the Revit schedules. To use this feature, I'm going to click on sorting slash grouping button in the property palette. And when I do that, the schedule properties window opens again, but this time its sorting and grouping tab is active. Here we can sort the equipment based on their sales value in a particular column inside this schedule. So I click on the sort by in the drop down menu and then I select mark to sort the equipment based on their mark number. Now for the order of the equipment, I leave this option on ascending, meaning that the instances of the equipment will be sorted from A to Z or in ascending numerical order. I'm done here and I click OK. And as we can see, Revit sorted the pumps based on their mark number in ascending order. For this video, I'm still using the Revit file 1F1, which you can download from the link below. Sometimes we need to count how many equipment with the same type of information such as model number we have in the schedule. For example, in this file, pumps number 2 and 3 have the same model number. Also, the model number is the same for the pumps 4, 5 and 6. And I like to count how many equipment or how many pumps have the same model number. Of course, we can simply count those from this schedule because we only have a few pumps listed here. But think about large projects that you can have more than 100 or 200 pieces of equipment. In those cases, counting the equipment with the same model number is a very time consuming task. And also, one can easily miscount the equipment. Luckily, Revit has a tool for this task. To use that tool, I need to click on sorting slash grouping button in the property palette. And that opens the schedule properties window with active sorting and grouping tab. The first thing I need to do is to change the sort by option to model. This is because I want Revit to group the schedule rows based on equipment model numbers. After that, I check the footer option to show the equipment model number and the count. The count option shows the quantity of equipment instances that have the same model number. The total in this drop down menu isn't going to show anything in the schedule right now. This is because we haven't defined any total value yet. We will look at what total is later. Next option is the blank line, which simply adds a blank row after each group. In this example, I don't want that blank row, 
so I leave this option unchecked. Note that I still like the equipment to be sorted based on their mark number, so I need to add another sorting condition, which I do by selecting mark from here. Now I'm done with the changes, so I go ahead and click OK. Great, Revit has identified the equipment with the same model number and grouped them together. Also, below each group, Revit is showing the common model number and the quantity of the equipment within that group. But Revit also gives us an option to simplify our schedule by showing only one equipment per group. This is particularly useful for large projects with many instances of the same equipment. To use that option, I need to go back to the sorting and grouping tab in the schedule properties window. Here, I need to do two things. First, I need to remove the sorting by mark condition because I don't want Revit to distinguish between the equipment with different mark numbers. The second thing I need to do is to uncheck the itemize every instance option. By unchecking this option, Revit only shows one row for all the equipment instances with the same model number. This is because I previously set the model number to be the grouping condition. Now I'm done with the changes, so I go ahead and click OK. Our schedule is simplified now. Revit only shows one row per group. If you notice, the cells in the mark column is empty in the last two groups. This is because the instances within these groups have different mark numbers. For this video, I continue to use the Revit file 1F1. However, I change the schedule sorting condition back to sort by mark. Here, I like to use an option in Revit that shows me the quantity of all the equipment instances listed on a schedule. To use that option, I click on the sorting slash grouping button in the property palette, which opens the schedule properties window. In this window, I check the grand totals here and I leave this drop-down menu as it is to show title, count, and totals. And again, don't worry about the totals, we will cover that later. So the last thing I need to do here is to change the title to pump quantity in this box. Now I'm done here and I hit OK. And there it is. Revit just added a text below the schedule that shows the title and quantity of all the listed equipment in this schedule. Now it's your turn. Practice what you learned in the last three videos and feel free to play with different sorting and grouping conditions to learn more about them. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 1G1, which you can download from the link below. Here, we are going to see how we can make changes to the formatting of this schedule. Let's start by editing the title of the schedule. To do that, I click on the title cell and I change the title to Palm Schedule and then I hit enter on my keyboard. Similarly, I can change the title of the column's headers. For example, I click on the Mark cell here and I change the header to Equipment Tag. I also like to change all the other header tags to be all caps, so I make that change too. Now I want to change alignment of the tags in the cell. To do that, I click on the column letter to select the entire column. Then from the appearance panel in the ribbon, I use these two options to change the alignments. We can also select multiple columns by clicking on a column letter, holding down the left mouse button, and then dragging the cursor over to the other columns. Now I'm going to make the same change to the text alignments. I can also make some of these changes by using the formatting tab in the schedule properties window. To open that window, I click on the formatting button in the properties palette. As you can see, we can change the column titles from here too. I go ahead and change this one to equipment number and then I hit OK and go back to see the change. And great, the first column header is updated. Note that you can adjust the column size by moving the column border. Now I go back to the formatting tab in the schedule properties window. And as you see, 
we can change the scheduled text orientation and alignment from here too. Note that the text orientation is not the same as vertical alignment, but I'm not going to show you the effect of this option, and I leave this up to you to try to change the heading orientation and see its effect. For this video, I continue to use the Revit file 1G1. We often need to edit the cell values to be shown in a specific format that we want. For example, in this schedule, I like the dollar sign to appear next to the cost. Also, I like to get rid of the trailing zeros, and finally, I like to group the digits of the numbers in these cells. To make these changes, I click on the formatting button on Property Palette to open the Scheduled Properties window again. From the fields, I'm going to select the cost, because that's the column I like to reformat. Next, I click on the field formatting button, which opens this window. Here are the options that I can use to format the cell values. By default, Revit has the Use Project setting checked on, and because of that, all the other options are grayed out. So I go ahead and uncheck this to make all the other options available. The first option here is the unit of the column. In this particular case, the unit of measurement for the cost column is not editable because there is only one option to select which is currency. But if we were editing another column such as dimensions, we would have multiple units such as meters, feet and inches in this drop down menu. The next option here is the rounding. This option gives you the ability to define what order of magnitude you want to round the numbers to or how many decimal places you like to have. Choosing the unit symbol is the next available option here. This is where I can select the dollar sign to appear next to the cost values. So I go ahead and select that. Also, as you remember, I wanted to suppress the trailing zeros in the cost values. This option does exactly that. So I check this too. And the last thing I need to do is to check the group digit option to group every three consecutive digits. Now I'm done with my formatting, so I click OK here and then here again. This is great. The formatting of the cost values is matching to what I wanted. I continue to use the Revit file 1G1 for this video. In Revit, we can change cells background color based on values of other cells by using a feature called conditional formatting. To see how that works, I'm going to highlight the mark number of any equipment that cost more than $7,000. To start, I need to click on the formatting button in the properties palette. This opens the scheduled properties window with active formatting tab. Here, I need to select the column that I'd like to define a conditional format for its cells. In this case, I want the mark column cells to be highlighted, so I leave the selected column on mark. Next, I click on the conditional formatting button, which opens the conditional formatting window. Here, I need to define the proper condition based on the values. In this case, I want Revit to look at the values in the cost column, so I select the cost from the field. In the test menu, I select the type of condition that I need. For this example, I select greater than condition and then in the value box, I type in 7000. This means that the condition is met if any cell in the cost column has a value greater than 7000. The last edit here is choosing the background color, which I select yellow. Now I'm done and I click OK on both windows. And there it is. The cells in the equipment number column are yellow for any equipment that cost more than $7,000. And this is how the schedule looks like on a sheet. For this video, I continue to use the Revit file 1G1. Revit can add all the values listed in a column and return their sum. The sum is called total in Revit. This feature is particularly useful for cost estimating tasks. As an example, here I like to show the total cost of all the equipment listed in this schedule. 
To use this feature, I click on the formatting button in the properties palette. Here, I select the cost field and then from this drop down menu, I select calculate totals. I'm not done here though. I need to make a few changes in the sorting slash grouping tab. In this tab, I first check the grand total and then I type total cost in this box. And then I change this drop down menu to title and totals. This tells Revit to only show these two items below this schedule. Now I'm done with this window and I click OK to see the result. As you can see, Revit is showing us the sum of all the sale values in the cost column right below the schedule. So in this video and the last three videos, you learned about formatting of the schedule cells. Now it's a good time for you to practice what you learned. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 1H1, which you can download from the notes. Most of the time, we need to make changes to the default appearance of the schedule to match the project's standards. For example, in this schedule, I like to edit the font size of the title, increase the thickness of the schedule outline, and also get rid of the blank row before the data. To make these changes, I first double click on the schedule to open the schedule editing view. And then I click on the appearance edit button in the properties palette. And when I do that, the schedule properties window with active appearance tab opens. In this tab, we can make a few changes to the graphics and text of the schedule. I start my edits by checking the outline box here to activate the outline editing option. And from this drop down menu, I select the line type to be white. After that, I uncheck the box for blank row before the data here to get rid of the empty row that we had in the schedule. And the last thing I like to change here is the title font size. Now I'm done here and I click on OK. If you notice, we don't see all the changes here. To see those changes, we need to look at the schedule in a sheet. So I'm going to go back to the sheet that we saw in the beginning of this video. And as we see, the schedule appearance has been updated with the changes that I just made. Now for practice, try to use all the other appearance editing options and then check the results by viewing the schedule in a sheet. For this video, I continue to use the Revit file 1H1, which you can download from the link below. A very useful feature in Revit schedule is group header, which looks like this. Let's try to use this feature. To group two or more headers, I need to click on one header, hold down the mouse button, and drag the cursor over to the next columns to select multiple headers. Then from the ribbon and in the titles and headers panel, I click on the group button. And Revit created a new cell just above the headers of these two columns. Now I need to type in a title for this new cell. So, I go ahead and type in manufacturer and model, and then I hit enter on my keyboard to update the cell. Deleting the group header is also very easy. I just need to click on the ungroup button here in the ribbon. There are other tools in here in the ribbon. These tools are very easy to use, and I recommend that you practice using them at least once just to see how they work. I'm working with the Revit file 1i1 for this video. You can download this Revit file from the link in the notes. In this schedule, I like to add a new column for the pump's discharge pressure. So as you know, I need to click on the fields button to open the schedule properties window. And then from this window, I can add the new column to the schedule. But we got a problem here. There is no parameter as pump discharge pressure in the available fields here. So first I need to create this parameter and then add it to the schedule. Creating a new parameter is a very important step in creating equipment schedules in Revit. That's because Revit comes with a very few predefined parameters and we want to be able to create our own. Here I can create a new parameter by clicking on the new parameter button 
which opens the parameter properties window. In this window, I can create the parameters that I want. However, I like to use a different way of creating parameters because I like to show you a menu which is not available in this window. So I close this window and I'm going to show you another way to create a new parameter in the next video. For this video, I continue to use the Revit file 1i1, which you can download from the links below. I prefer creating new parameters by using the project parameter option. To use this option, I open the Manage tab in the Revit ribbon, and then I click on the Project Parameter button, which is located in the Settings panel. When I do that, the Project Parameters window opens, and then I click on the Add button to open the Parameter Properties window. This window is almost the same as the Parameter Properties window that we saw in the previous video. The only difference is that this window has this category section. This section gives me the option to choose one or multiple categories for the parameter that I create in this window. Let's define our parameter now. On the top left of this window, I need to pick the parameter type. I can choose the type to be a project parameter, or I can pick a parameter from a shared parameter file. The main difference between these two types of parameters is that shared parameters, as their name indicates, can be shared between Revit models and families. But the project parameters don't have this feature. Sharing parameters is very useful in large projects that need a lot of coordination. We will learn more about shared parameters later in the course. But for now, I leave the parameter type to be project parameter because it's easier to create. Next, I need to select the category of the parameter. The category list is already filtered to only show mechanical categories, and that's what I want too. So here from the list, I select mechanical equipment because the parameter that I am creating right now must be available for selection in the mechanical equipment schedules. Note that I could select two or more categories. For example, some parameters such as airflow need to be listed in both air terminal and mechanical equipment categories. That's because airflow must be available for selection for both air terminal and mechanical equipment schedules. Now, in the parameter data section, I type a name for the parameter in the box. Next, I choose the discipline of the parameter as piping because it is the best discipline based on the nature of this parameter. Some parameters, such as temperature, can be in both piping and HVAC disciplines, and it really doesn't matter which discipline you select. You just need to make sure that the unit of the measurement is correct for your parameter. From this drop-down menu, I select pressure to be the type of the parameter. And in the next drop-down menu, I choose the mechanical flow to be the group for my parameter. I selected this group because pump pressure is related to mechanical flow. However, I'm not too concerned which group I select here because it really doesn't affect my parameter's performance. Also, I can change the group later, but unlike the group, name and discipline of the parameter cannot be changed after it's created. So we have to pay extra attention to the name and the discipline of the parameter. Next is the edit tooltip button, which opens this window. Here, we can add any tip we want about the parameter. I type in a short text and then I hit OK to close the window. At the center of this window, I choose the parameter to be an instance parameter. This is because each instance of a pump can have a unique value for its discharge pressure. Finally here, I leave these two options as they are, and I click OK to create the parameter. Here we see our new parameter and I don't have anything else to do here, so I click OK to close this window. Now I'm going back to the scheduled properties window. And as you see, the new parameter that I just created is listed in the available fields. So I go ahead and add it to my schedule. And when I'm done, I click OK. And there it is. We just added a new parameter to the project and used it to create a new column in our schedule. 
So for practice, create another project parameter and use it to add a new column to this schedule. This diagram shows the steps for creating and using a Revit Equipment Schedule database. Before we go over each step, let's see what's included in the database. As you can see here, the database contains two files. The first file is a Revit project file, which stores all the schedules that we create. We later use these schedules in the actual projects. The second file is a shared parameter file. This file contains all the shared parameters that we need for creating the schedules. These shared parameters follow a specific naming convention that we will learn about later. So the first step in creating an equipment schedule in the database is to create and save the shared parameters that we need for that schedule. After that, we use those shared parameters to create project parameters. And then we use the project parameters to create the schedules in the database. Once we finished creating the schedule in the database, then we can use these schedules in the actual project by copying them from the database. This is the third step in the process. And the fourth step may or may not be needed. For example, we may need to add new columns to the schedule that we just copied from the database. So in this case, we can use the shared parameters of the database to create new project parameters inside the actual project. Then we can use those parameters to add the new columns. So this was just an overview of the process. In the next videos, you will learn more about each step. In this video, I'm going to create the database's first component, which is a Revit project file. Here I click on the new button to create a new project file. And then in this window, I choose a template for the file. If your company already has a template file, you need to choose that file here. This is to make sure that the database has your company's standard fonts and the line types. Here I select one of the Revit's default templates and then I click OK. Now I need to save the project file. I go ahead and select Save and then I choose a name for the file. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file that you can download from the link in the notes. In the previous video, I created the first component of the database, which is open here. Now I'm going to create the second component of the database, which is a shared parameter file. To do that, I click on the Manage tab in the ribbon, and from the Settings panel, I click on the Shared Parameter button, which opens this window. We can create the Shared Parameter file from this window. However, if your company already has a Shared Parameter file, I recommend browsing and using that file here. I don't have an existing Shared Parameter file, so I go ahead and create a new one using the Create button. Here, I name the file Equipment Scheduled Database Shared Parameter, and then I click on Save. The file should be created now. Let's double check that. I open the Windows browser and then I go to the folder in which I save the shared parameter file. And here it is. This is the shared parameter file, which is a text file. In this video, I'm working with the Revit file and the shared parameter file that you can download from the link below. After you downloaded the files, just make sure to browse the shared parameter file from the Revit project file. In this section, we learn more about the first step in the workflow diagram that we saw at the beginning of this lesson. As you remember, creating shared parameters in the shared parameter file was the first step. So I'm going to do that by opening the Manage tab in the ribbon, and then I click on the Shared Parameter button to open this window. The first thing I need to do here is to create a group for the parameters. So I click on the new button here and I name this group Equipment Schedule. Now I can create the first parameter by clicking on the new button under the parameters. In this window, I can define a new parameter. 
However, it's very important to follow a good naming convention. This is because you may need more than 100 different parameters for your database. And having a good naming convention helps a lot with managing and using the parameters later. In the notes below, you can learn about the naming convention that I use for parameters. I highly recommend using this naming convention because it's very easy to understand and expand. So I go ahead and type the parameter name, select the discipline and type, and then I hit OK. As we see here, a new shared parameter has been created. But let's open the shared parameter file directly from the Windows browser to see how the new parameter looks like inside the file. So the first line that I highlighted here is the new parameter that I just created. Any other parameter that I create will be added as a new line just like this one. For this video, I continue to use the same files as I did in the last video. You can download the files from the link below. As you remember, the second step in the workflow was to create project parameters from the shared parameters that we stored in the shared parameter file. In order to do that, I open the Manage tab in the ribbon and I click on the Project Parameter button. Then, in this window, I click on the Add button. We saw this window before when I wanted to create project parameters. Earlier, I chose project parameter as the parameter type, but now I choose shared parameter. After that, I click on the select button here and a new window opens up. Here, I select the shared parameter that I want to create as a project parameter. Note that this is the parameter that I created in the previous video. I'm going to select it and then I click OK. As you can see, the parameter name, discipline, and type are already selected in this window, and we cannot change them. This is because these fields are already defined in the shared parameter file. But we still can change the group and the category of the parameter, which I'm doing right now. So I'm done here and I click OK to close this window. Here you see that we just created a new project parameter and this parameter is ready to be used for schedules. For this video, I used the same files as I did in the last video. You can download these files from the link below. As you remember, the Revit file in the Equipment Schedule database is where we create and store all the equipment schedules. So, as you work on your projects, each time that you need to create a new equipment schedule, you will have to create it in the database and then insert it into your project file. This way, your database grows as you work on different projects and eventually you will have all the schedules that you need. However, inside the database, we can create new schedules faster by using a template schedule. The process is very simple. We create a template schedule in which we include the most common columns, columns such as mark, manufacturer, and model. We also edit the appearance of the template schedule to match what we want in every schedule. Later, any time that we want to create a new equipment schedule, we make a copy of this template and then we start editing the copy. To show you the process, I'm going to create a template schedule with three of the most common parameters. And then I'm going to edit the appearance of the template to what I like. This portion of the video is on fast speed, so don't assume I work this fast. Okay, the template schedule looks good to me. Now I'm going to create a new equipment schedule by making a copy of the template. To do that, here in the project browser, I right click on the template schedule and then from the duplicate view, I select duplicate. Then I change the schedule name to fan schedule and I start editing it to what I like. This portion of the video 
is also on fast speed because you already know how to make all of these changes. And that's all the changes. Now this newest schedule is ready to be inserted into the actual project files. You will learn how to do that soon. So to practice what you learned about shared parameters and template schedule, go ahead and create a new shared parameter and then use that parameter to create another equipment schedule in the database. First of all, congratulations on getting to this point. You have learned a lot so far. In this video, you will learn how to insert schedules from a database into a project. But before that, I want to let you know about the AEC Learn Equipment Schedule database. This database has 50 equipment schedules and more than 150 shared parameters. This is a unique database that you can use to save many, many hours on your projects. Time is money, so this database will definitely benefit your company too. Link to buy this database is in the notes, so make sure to check it out. Now, let's see how you can insert the schedules from a database into a project. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 3B1 and the AEC Learn Equipment and Schedule database, which you can download from the link in the notes. Here I have the file 3B1 open. As you can see, we have multiple equipment and air terminals in this model. I like to create equipment schedules for these equipment and air terminals. However, I want to use the AEC Learn Equipment Schedule database to create these schedules. In order to use the schedules from the database, I need to use the Insert from File feature. To access this feature, I open the Insert tab in the ribbon, and in the Load from the Library panel, I click on the Insert from File button and select Insert Views from File. In this browser, I select the AEC Learn Equipment Schedule database and then I click open. When I do that, this window opens and it asks me to select the views or the schedules that I like to insert. As you can see, Revit is showing me all the equipment schedules in the database file. So I go ahead and select the schedules that I need. And when I'm done, I click on OK. And here it is. Revit took me to one of the inserted schedules. But we can see all the inserted schedules here in the project browser. And I'm just going to add all the schedules to a sheet. Now it's your turn. For practice, go ahead and insert multiple schedules from the database. For this video, I'm working with the same files that I used in the previous video. As you can see, the schedules are not listing any equipment or air terminals. This is because the equipment or air terminals do not meet any of the schedules filtering conditions. So in order to correctly list them, we need to know the filtering conditions of the schedules. And after that, we have to make changes to the equipment and air terminals to meet those conditions. To start, I check the filtering conditions of this schedule in the Schedule Properties window. Here we see that this schedule only lists the equipment that their mark number starts with ACIU. So I know that I just need to change the mark number of the indoor units to start with ACIU. To do that, I close this window and then I go to the model. In this view, I select one of the indoor units and then I change its mark number to ACIU1. Then I do the same thing for the other unit, but I call it ACIU2. So I'm going to go back to the schedule to see the changes. And here they are. The indoor units are now listed in the correct schedule. So for practice, Go ahead and try to list the other equipment and air terminals in their schedules by following the steps that I took in this video. For this video, I'm working with the Revit file 3D1, which you can download from the link in the notes. A nice way of showing the equipment remarks is to list them right below the schedule. We saw an example of this method earlier in the course. 
To list the remarks below this schedule, I need to create one legend for each schedule, and then list all the equipment remarks in the legend just like this one. As you can see, I already created one legend for each schedule in this file. So I go ahead and add the air terminal legend to the sheet and I place it right below the air terminal schedule. Next, I need to go back to the schedule editing view and add the remark numbers to the remarks column. I'm done here and I go back to the sheet. So in this method, the idea is that the numbers in the remark column simply refer to the applicable remarks listed in the legend. Obviously, this method has some additional steps, and also, it is not as automated as we like it to be. However, this method of showing the remarks under the schedule is an industry standard, and hopefully, future Revit versions provide a better method to show the remarks. Note that we could simply list the remarks in the remarks cell. For example, in this fan schedule, I'm going to list all the remarks inside the remarks cell. As you can see, this method looks okay for a few remarks, but as the number of remarks grow, the cell gets too congested and it becomes hard to read. So because of this, I prefer to use the first method, even though it involves some extra steps. Thank you so much for watching this video series. Please don't forget to check out the AEC Learn Equipment and Schedule database in the link below. Creating a database like this usually takes hundreds of hours with a lot of trial and error, but you can simply download this database and save so much time right away. And finally, if this course was helpful, please like this video and subscribe to AEC Learn's YouTube channel.